Yes, today what happens is uh, almost one out of every three people are affected due to contaminated water. And in, in, in India itself, two lakh people are a casualty of contamination in groundwater. Uh, so right now the need of an R is a system that can regularly monitor groundwater at the source in real time and inform about any anomalies or degradation. The other four want. So SAF water does the same. It is installed at, a, at the groundwater source. Uh, where it collects the data in real time and inf forewarns the users about any predictions or anomalies that can happen in the future as well as now along with the purification recommendations that they would have to do it to improve the source so generally today what happens is if there is any casualty then the blame goes to water not earlier so with soft water everything happens in real time so that there is no casualty ahead and the information that you gather is taken and can be sent directly to um, to community. Uh, so, so what we are doing is, yeah. uh, at the moment we are collecting more and more data, yeah. so that we improve our machine learning model as well as the platform as a whole. Uh, because ultimately, it's the user that's going to use the platform would make more sense than we putting the technology in place. Yeah. Uh, rather than putting the data in the community, what we uh, would do later on in the future with service, IBM service card uh, helps. Uh, we will be looking at the, a part of SAF water uh, as open source technology. This would allow more community engagement as well as improve our platform. And, uh, to, and again, the places where we cannot reach, the community can reach for us. So that's the uh, ultimate plan. We are waiting for IBM service card soon to happen and that's going to help us do that. And what kind of uh, contaminants it warns about? So uh, directly it senses for P uh, pH, TDS, turbidity, temperature uh, and more. Uh, in indicatively it can sense for physical, chemical and biological contaminations. Rather it's an indicative device and not parameter specific device. So it indicates whether there is physical contamination or not, chemical contamination and, or not, or and how to improve it. What would be the improvements? Uh, so for example, in this case where there is a chance of biological contamination, it would uh, suggest to either boil or if it is if the contamination risk is very high, it would suggest to go for a UV purifier. I see. So all this is done in real time. And is there an advantage because now, especially over time, you're going to collect data. Yeah. And with that data, you'll be able to maybe see certain trends that might emerge yeah. as well. Like, yeah, it's... absolutely. Uh, what happens, I, rather we'll see the L1 side, uh, where you'll clearly see the trends of how the data has evolved from two seasons, that is summer and uh, now rainy. Uh, we've seen a lot of patterns in that. And uh, in the future, we wish to have some more uh, better indications or more proactive indications with those data that we can have collected right now. But yeah, definitely there are a lot of patterns that we are exploring every day and uh, yeah, it helps us to build the platform much more better. Responsible to take data, filter data and send it to our main unit which connects to the uh, to the main cloud. So that is inside. Okay. And uh, this unit is configurable based on the site as well as based on what water parameter the user specifically wants to test in case there is any requirement like that. So in case if there is any industrial client or industrial requirement where such as mining and all where they would want more heavy metal detection, they would go with a different unit which supports those sensors. But the main unit will be the same. Okay, and yeah. the sensors. They are here. Yeah, and, oh. and so at the moment, then it sends uh, on both sides. Yeah. So yeah. what it does is optical sensors are below, and uh, sensors that are non-optical, it could be ISC or it could be contact based. They are on top. So this allows better, take uh, better uh, or clear readings for optical sensors because generally on top there is lot of turbulent flow that happens, and below is something that is settled down. So that's what we learned from our L1 and that we are implementing here. Yeah, this, is, this is L2? Yeah, this is, is L2. L2. L1 will be going later yeah. on. Yeah.
And for the hardware for this one, who developed the hardware? So, uh, at the moment, uh, this unit was designed by us, but the yeah. units henceforth, that yeah. is L3, L4 and beyond, yeah. will be developed with our hardware team. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So is this the mains pipe? For the yeah, this is the uh, pipe which uh, carries the groundwater. Yeah. So there is a pump over there. Yeah. And that water goes on top in a tank. I see. And yes. uh, before that we are connecting so that we get clear uh, data about the groundwater. Okay. And As so the kind of yeah. contaminants that you'd be looking for? Yeah, so we are looking for physical, chemical, biological contamination. Uh, again, this is not a lab test uh, replacement, but rather uh, an indicative device that, that will enable users to go for a more accurate uh, report or even take pro proactive measures in real time, which a uh, lab test would take five days. So physical, chemical, biological contaminations it uh, indicates and then the user gets the instruction from our platform itself on how to make it portable. So, if in this case, I think it's suggesting them to boil the water, which is uh, and clear, which is a clear indication that there is a uh, chance of biological contamination. Okay. Is that what it's registering now? It's registering yeah, yeah. It's uh, we have yeah. a unit which has an on-site visual indicator. We'll go from there. Yeah, we'll go inside. Okay. But it's here. So okay. that has an indicator as well as uh, you can even see in the then that, that information gets yeah. transmitted. Okay. There is water. And do you think going forward the main use will be on um, pipe based systems? Yeah, a pipe based system. Okay. Because uh, there are two challenges with standalone systems. Yeah. One is we need a reservoir uh, which requires changing the plumbing system out there. Yeah. And in case if, in this case where the water requirement is huge and the, uh, the tank is on top, way higher than what is at this level. Yeah. So in that case reservoirs can uh, deplete the pressure and that in itself will affect the entire plumbing. So going with an inline system would be more helpful. Of course there are challenges but yeah, thanks to machine learning and all, it can be sorted out. So the user gets the exact data. Sure. Yeah, so we just got data about okay. two minutes more. So it's showing very good. Okay. Showing all the sensor readings. So this so this is sending the data to that box yeah. and then that's yeah. transmitted. Mm -hmm. Is it? Does it use Wi-Fi? To uh, it uses cellular. Mm -hmm. It's fine. It's on 4G. Okay. Yeah. Or I could uh, send a screenshot. Um, it's okay. I like. Uh, it's nice okay. to have it yeah. uh, in situ. Uh, again, it's completely a split unit which supports both uh, cellular as well as uh, Wi-Fi. So in this site, actually, there is one more challenge here. There is no network at all. No, any cellular network is okay, uh, not cellular. available no, no. here. Okay. So what we've done is uh, we've used a modem which is actually at a line of sight of an antenna close by. Uh, so okay. if we shake it a little bit, it won't give, it won't connect. But we are fixing this in our L3. Uh, what we brainstorm right now is yeah. with the system, now it is connected via wire. What we do is we add a local network in this area, kind of like project out. Yeah, okay. And uh, then our main unit which connect, communicates with the cloud yeah. is set it up at a place where there is network available. Yeah. So in this case the Wi-Fi is available there but not here. Mm -hmm. So we can have the main unit there. Yeah. So you're almost like a mesh network. Like yeah. Like kind of like a mesh network but uh, more of a local area network. Yeah.
this is something like uh, Arduino, like uh, Raspberry. Uh, yeah. So the actually the unit outside yeah. contains an Arduino. Okay. But the unit inside contains an ESP32. Okay. The environment is kind of similar, like uh, yeah. Arduino. Yeah. But uh, that is much more capable. It has two two cores, which allow okay. it to make processes.